Why aren't there more plasma tweeters? Hmm, we haven't talked about plasma tweeters. And this question comes from A. A. D. J. Van Dyck, I'm guessing, of the, of the Netherlands. And he writes, I'd like to hear your meaning and vision of a plasma tweeter. I know the Magnet MP01 and MP02 used by the MPX box, and I love the sound, but, um, oops, sorry, uh, ozone is not positive. Um, the, the, oh, uh, the splinter, sorry. Um, Technically speaking, it's so far I know the only solution to give the tweeter a 360 degree listening experience. Do you know the reason why this kind of speaker is not more well known? Kind regards, Matt. Um, well, you, you hit on, on part of the reason why, the ozone, but yeah, I'm going to talk about that. Sorry, I'm going to put my stuff down here. But before we do that, I, in yesterday's thing, I showed you Music Room 1 and how big it was. Well, this thing makes Music Room 1 look like a closet. This is probably the last time you'll ever see this massive room without furniture. This is, this is where all the PS Audio hi-fi advocates uh, that you talk to on the phone, we're gonna uh, come two days from today, this place is gonna be filled with desks and, and there's a stereo system. We're gonna, way over here, we're gonna put a really cool high-end system in, and, and fill this room. In, in fact, we can, should we turn the lights on? I guess I didn't even turn the lights on, did I? Um, let, me, let me turn the lights on here. And we can, yeah, there we go. Um, we, can, we can fill this room with people and music, and this is, when you call in, this is where you're gonna be calling. And this is where customer service, what we call our hi-fi advocates, are here ready to help you guys. And, and this room, this is really cool. It's just got all new carpet probably as clean as it's ever going to be. <laughs> and the views out here are spectacular. You can see, oh gosh, all the way on the one side, all the way to the flat irons and over here, boulder lumber. Well, that's not too exciting. Um, but anyway, the, I just thought you'd like to see, this is the last view you'll ever get of this before it's just filled with people and desks and things. Plasma tweeters, boy, the blue flame tweeter. The very first true high-end loudspeaker system or hi-fi system I ever saw was a guy named Norm Little, who was a, a, the employer of Stan Warren, my partner in PS Audio. And, and, and Stan was a waterbed installer for a company called Ball Waterbeds. And Norm Little owned Ball Waterbeds. Well, Norm was just... Uh, a, a crazy, wacko audiophile that, that his biggest hobby was, was this, this, this system, and it was absolutely magnificent. This system, something just dropped on my head. It's not water. Um, this system was amazing. It was a triamped audio research system with a Rabco turntable and a linear tracking arm. And the speakers had Serwin Vega numbers one and two 18 inch subwoofers and then Janssen electrostats, these kind of curved panels sitting on top of the, of the woofers that were the mid ranges and sitting on top were the blue flame, they used to call them, I don't remember even who made them, but they were plasma tweeters and they were stunning. So. Uh, they do, you can't play them for too long, and, and Norm had another set of tweeters. I think they were also made by Jansen, and he'd only pull out the blue flames every once in a while, kind of like a, a, for a kick, because uh, they did, they created a lot of ozone, and ozone isn't good for you. I have a Tesla coil, and my giant Tesla coil pumps out amazing amounts of ozone, and ozone's, well, it's what you smell after a lightning storm, which Kind of, gives, kind of smells fresh. We relate that smell to the fresh feeling that you get after a rainstorm that you know washes everything away. But in fact, it's actually a poison. We, we don't want to really uh, inhale that. It's not good for us. So a plasma tweeter is an amazing device. It is the only one that I've ever, the only way I've ever seen or heard of that has no mass. So we know that a, uh, well, let's see, 
No, even a, even a Heil uh, plasmatronic, uh, while I don't know if it had the blue flame, but, but that's the same sort of idea. The mass of a tweeter, uh, the, the diaphragm of a tweeter has mass, and you're essentially trying to move air at very high frequencies with as little mass as possible. So somewhere along the line, someone came up with the idea that if we instantly heated air, and then cooled it and heated it. It, it, it would and it could be creating a pulsating wave front as the air expanded, it pushes out and as it cools, rapidly cools down, you know, it, it goes, and so you can get this essentially, which is sound, right? It's, it's, it's pulsating, moving air coming back and forth and because it has no mass, it's just a high voltage plasma, then there's, it's, the ultimate tweeter. It's 360 degrees, because just picture a little lightning bolt, if you will. It isn't really that, but that's the easiest way to picture it, between two poles. And as that thing just, you know, it, it makes kind of a blue flame, creates the ozone. And it is a remarkable way to hear high frequency sound. Remarkable. And he's right, it, that you probably will never hear a better sounding tweeter. I don't think they exist. But, it, it's totally exotic, it's highly impractical, it makes poisonous ozone, uh, and even in, in, um, in Hill's plasmatronic where he used inert gases, like I think he used helium to, to create a plasma which was better, but still you had to have tanks of helium. So it, maybe someday someone will come up with a massless tweeter that does not electrify the air or have to have tanks of helium to make it work. And when that day comes, I will be the first to sign up for that tweeter. All right, thanks. And we'll come back when this place is filled up, okay? All right, have a good day. And I'll, I'll talk to you tomorrow. Bye.